Hello there, everyone. A very warm welcome to a very special exclusive interview we are bringing to you here on Channel I, Sri Lanka Rupahini Corporation, Rupavahini. And uh, this individual wears many hats and is a very significant personality. And uh, he is none other than Dr. Clarence Tan. He is a futurist, a technologist, an entrepreneur, innovator, and a speaker, and also an author, as I read recently. So, and also he brings in a very intriguing twist to it. He's a speaker, but adds himself, and he wants to ca call himself as a comedian, a Chinese comedian, that is. <laughs> and uh, also he says that uh, his mission is to empower and equip individuals and institutions to make sure that they are ready to take up challenges which are yet to be faced in, in a global context. And also Dr. Tan has shared his expertise and passion in prestigious platforms such as the United Nations, the World Bank, and even TEDx, which we are also clean, keen listeners to these platforms. So in addition, he has conducted workshops for the South Korean government on expo-related matters. And today, we are privileged by the presence of this remarkable individual to talk about his remarkable journey and listen to his thoughts and about the future prospects that he has and uh, the unique co intersection as well in comedy and innovation. So ladies and gentlemen, let's join me in welcoming Dr. Clarence Tan. Right. Welcome to Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for All having me. All the very best here. and uh, we are, it's a great pleasure on behalf of Sri Lanka Rupahini Corporation to have you, sir. Thank you for having me here. So how has it been? How has Sri Lanka been treating you in the stay? Uh, this is my fourth trip here, and um, you know I'm so uh, you know I'm very encouraged by uh, what I see, um, you know, and uh, I mean the reason I was uh, I was here uh, was to give a, a keynote speech for a startup fund that got started in uh, um, in Hatchworks, um, mm -hmm. which my friend Jivan started, mm -hmm. um, and uh, to see all these enterprising, innovative uh, individuals coming all from Sri Lanka coming up with fantastic ideas that I can take, I think can, you know, take the global stage um, and be very successful. Great, great to know. And also, um, now we have described him as an, a futurist and innovator, entrepreneur, technologist, and also a speaker, and also, as I found out, an author of an AI specialized book and wannabe Chinese comedian. <laughs> now, these are a range of um, titles and roles that we are mentioning. How have you been able to embrace all of this as an individual? And also, and how has it integrated in your work? Well, I, I think it integrates really well um, because I was also the um, Asia Pacific ambassador for a think tank at NASA called Singularity University. And essentially, uh, they told me that, you know, I should use comedy to transmit knowledge and information about technology um, to the masses using comedy. Because as you know, technology could be very dry and could be very difficult to understand. So I try to incorporate that. If you've seen, you know, some of my TEDx talks, I've uh, done three of them. Um, you know, I try to incorporate some comedy in there. That's great to know. And um, also, the mission is much deeper. It's to sure. empower and to equip the individuals and institutions towards facing the grand um, challenges. challenges, which <coughs> are yet to be found. So how would you share your examples if you have from the past, how you have been able to, you know, empower them, and how has this achievement been so far, and also the impact that it has brought to it. Yeah, I, I think maybe I can talk about the uh, current projects I'm working on, which, which you know, um, has the impact. The first one, obviously, as you are aware, um, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the UN, which all 193 country members have uh, agreed to. Um, you know, out of the 17 SDGs, I find the most uh, important one, I think, is eliminating poverty. Because without doing that, none of the rest would work. So what I did, I, I'm also the co-founding member of the first angel investment group in Australia. And uh, when invest, I've invested in over 55 companies. But I find the biggest problem you have is uh, when you want to invest in a startup and they can't agree on the valuation. They think they're worth this much and you as an investor say, no, you're worth that much and then you have no agreement and you walk away. Mm -hmm. So I want to eliminate that. So we created a platform called Epic, Exponential Positive Impact Capital. And what we do is we connect investors who want to do good to projects that have social impact but still profitable. So what we do is we don't take shares in a company, we take a percentage of your revenue. So we don't care about the valuation. And where we view as long as the company keeps growing and doing well because we take a percentage of your um, revenue, just like a GST, 
but you have full control over your company. We're not taking shares in your company. I think that uh, eliminates the risk for the investors and it helps the um, startup. So when we got the money back, we can then reinvest into other projects. So that's one that's uh, very dear to me. Uh, the second project is um, Abbey by Gogotech, which is a um, smart, portable, affordable wheelchair project. I don't know whether you guys know, but over 80 million people need wheelchair every year, but we only make about uh, 5 million manual ones and 1 million uh, motorized ones. And the motorized ones are very expensive, very heavy, and we made one you know, that basically cost the price of a high-end iPhone. So we want people to have ability to get those chairs. Um, and we were lucky enough to be selected into the Techstar Longevity Program that was funded by um, Melinda Gates' family office, and we actually got her to ride on the chair. Um, so that's a project that we're still working on, and we're, I'm actually here because we're looking at maybe moving the manufacturing base to Sri Lanka to do the mm -hmm. prototypes and uh, you know, enable um, this part of the world to be able to be a leader in uh, this kind of tech. That's great news for Sri Lankans, I believe. And also, I'll just uh, you know, take an uh, extraction from, from the talk that you have given on TEDx, and it says, uh, as Dr. Tan says, uh, we have a health system, and it's not uh, it's not a health system, actually. As you say, it's a sick care system. And nobody makes money if you are healthy. Correct. <laughs> That's pretty intriguing for us to think as well. But everybody makes money when you are sick. And this is a different perspective as a whole, put into words. Maybe we have understood, we have experiences, but something different that comes in. And also, as you say, it's a very bad model. And uh, nobody in the health industry is happy to see us healthy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the humor, you know, the right. intrig intrigues us to think. And also, uh, you mentioned about the ancient Chinese methodology that is there practiced by the doctors, that you pay to the doctor if you're healthy and not when you're sick. Yes, That's right. That's perfectly, you know, bringing out that ancient relation that you should have, which should be implemented in a good term. So this proves the ability for Mr. Dr. Tan to bring us the, you know, thinker in us and make sure that you so. In that opportunity, you have gained the massive opportunities in the prestigious pl platforms such as wow. the United Nations, the World Bank, and the TEDx. So out of these experiences, what is the most closest to your heart as an experience that you think is the most memorable one? And also, what are the messages, the key messages that you want to convey? Yeah, I, I think the uh, most memorable ones are the TEDx, obviously. And it was TEDx youth, you know, and, and to inspire the youth um, you know, that they can be better than what they have been uh, told, right? I mean, um, coming from Asian background, as you know, your parents want to be a doctor, engineer, or a lawyer, right? Um, but there's more to life than that now, right? And things are changing so fast. I mean, you get all the uh, great um, founders of uh, Facebook and um, Apple and all that, and they were all not graduates, right? They're all dropouts. So things have changed a lot, but a lot of kids are still being pressured to basically to study hard, do well, you know, and you'll get a great job. But those days are over, right? There's disruption everywhere. So this is why I want to inspire them that, you know, you don't, you know, like obviously, you know, education ha plays its role, but it's not the only thing in life. Um, there are many pathways now to be successful. And how do you measure success anyway? It's not just money, right? It's also the positive impact you're creating for the world. So I think that's very important. Um, and that's what, you know, for me, that's the most memorable part about doing it. But I've also done, uh, you know, as, as you mentioned, um, talks at the UN, both at the General Assembly and also at, uh, in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, very eye-opening for me. Um, you know, Mongolia, it's a country where uh, the temperature is minus 50 in winter and plus 50 in summer. So if you're a vegetarian, you know, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so they, the climate change impact them more than, it, you know, more than anybody else that I know because uh, for them to survive as, as nomads, it's been very challenging. And yeah, I was there to try to inspire the youth that, you know, what can they do? You know, they're small population, uh, mainly desert. Um, so, so that, you know, to try to inspire them to, do, to, to see what kind of solutions they can innovate and come up with um, and, and to be able to get them to uh, think more laterally about stuff like that. That's great, Doctor. And um, you are also a workshop facilitator for mm -hmm. the South Korean government and uh, on an expo related matter that is. And uh, what are the valuable insights that uh, you have gained out of this experience and how did it shape up your perspective on technological innovation? Yeah, so it's not actually export, it's actually exponential organizations. Mm -hmm. We're trying to help them to think how to grow exponentially. Um, so, you know, basically in South Korea, um, the government thought that, you know, to inspire their youth 
the unemployed youth to become entrepreneurs to give them cash, right? And that obviously didn't work. Mm -hmm. They went out and had a great time mm. <laughs> and nothing was created yeah, right. because there was no purpose. And that's one of the things that I talk about in these EXO workshops. Like the most important thing is how do you find your MTP, your massive moonshot, transformative, transform not just yourself or your business, but the whole industry of the world and the purpose should be noble. And basically we talk about how do you find MTP? So Google's MTP is organizing the world's information. So regardless of whether you're a stakeholder, you're a customer, or you're a uh, employee, you know what they're about. They're about organizing information. Um, Coca-Cola is open happiness. TED, the TED Talks is idea worth spreading. So my personal MTP is seek, share, and apply knowledge to progress humanity. Um, the reason why I'm here, because it meets my MTP. Um, because time is the only scarce resource you have today, right? Because mo money you can earn back but you can't get back time until we have a time machine. So I always say, I'm waiting for my future self to come back and say, Clarence, we've got a time machine. Then I can waste all the time I want with you. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a different, again, another intriguing point for us, anyone to think about the time factor. And, uh, okay, on a lighter note, mm -hmm. now going back to the comedian that you are looking forward to be. So how did this intersection happen? The, com the comedy and uh, innovation, and uh, how, did, how did you discover your passion towards comedy and uh, how right. does it play in the role that you are working as an innovator and uh, a speaker? Um, I've always liked you know making people happy and laugh right and um, you know for example when I gave a talk at, um, at, at NASA mm -hmm. uh, they were asking me like what are the projects they're looking at in Asia so I told them that you know I've gone to China and teaching all the Chinese <laughs> to speak like me and we're calling India and selling them mobile plans so they thought it was a great idea, you know, 1.3 <laughs> billion to 1.2, now it's 1.3 now, but um, <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I think, you know, because humor makes things easier for people to understand, I think, and, uh, you know, and have fun with it. It's more relatable. So, yes, exactly. You're right, yeah. yes. And uh, looking into the future ahead and uh, emerging technologies or trends, mm -hmm. how do you believe it will be the most significant impact on our society and uh, how should the individuals prepare themselves to face these changes? Um, I think that's the beautiful part about um, where we are at this point in time, right? Mm -hmm. There are about 5.3 billion people on the internet. You know, there's no better time than now to be an innovator, an entrepreneur. You've got all these 5.3 billion people who are your customer, your potential investors, your potential collaborators, and so on. Um, and you're so connected. So it doesn't matter you're in Sri Lanka or you're in Australia or you're in Mongolia, as long as you have internet access, you can learn about ChatGPT, the AI, and so on. But what I want to caution people is the um, power of AI, you know, because once you release a genie out of the bottle, you can't put it back. For example, I was chairing a uh, European AI session at Oxford in 2019, just before COVID, and one of the presenters talked about the first apartheid soap dispenser in Facebook's mm -hmm. uh, men's room. So, if a black person put their hand underneath the soap dispenser, it will not dispense soap. If he put a piece of white tissue paper on top, it will dispense. Now, mm. that, that dispenser wasn't designed by a bunch of racists, right? But <laughs> it was obviously not thought of that skin pigmentation will have an, issue. have an issue. What I'm trying to show you here is that when you design an AI program or anything that will have impact in the world, you know, include everybody, not just an exclusive Yes, and then you know, basically when you release into the world, There's this no is market. a small problem, right? <laughs> but can you imagine something that has a greater impact? You released it out and you, know, you start basically you know, impacting the world in the wrong way, it, it, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. So this is one of the caution. And I think that you know, Sri Lanka has got a, um, you know, has a history of um, you know, uh, uh, religious and cultural, ethical stuff that they can contribute to technology. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, in your opinion, what are the key skills and uh, mindsets that uh, individuals should possess or cultivate, for that matter, in order to thrive in an increasing complex and technologically driven world? Yeah, so I think um, it's very important for them to learn how to learn, mm -hmm. right? Most of the schools teach you how to teach you facts, which you don't really need anymore, right? You got chat GPT and stuff like that. So how do you tell what's real and what's fake? you know, it's so difficult now. So I think that's the most important lesson that, you know, uh, that they should be taught. And obviously people talk about how you should be passionate, mm -hmm. but really it's the whole concept of Ikigai. 
you can't just be passionate, right? You've got to have the skill set to support your passion. You've got to make sure that your passion is something that will uh, that the world needs, and you'll be paid for it. So you know, those are you know, passion itself is not enough. Um, you know, passion is obviously important, and it creates resilience, and you know, but there's a point where it becomes stubbornness, right? Because you think that you're right all the time, and you might be wrong. So you need to be open. Um, to other suggestions and ideas so that you may be able to pivot when you need to and adapt yourself. Um, you know, as Charles Darwin said, right, the survival of the fittest is, is, is basically the one that can best adapt to the environment. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to teach. And, uh, you know, um, people that, you know, they, sh they should be able to adapt to any situation. Um, and, you know, passion itself is good, but it's not sufficient. Because it should be... Yes, it's a greater to be good for the majority where it should be helpful to and them. Yeah, as the well. impact on the on, on, on the world is it's not just about the dollars, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right, yes. And um, we talk, spoke about the success. Everybody the success story sounds really great. But also it won't be a success if there were the failures and you have conquered them. So in your approach, how do you approach towards failure and setbacks in your journey? And especially as an entrepreneur and an innovator. And um, how can you share if your memorable experiences, the failures that that you know ultimately uh, led towards the valuable uh, lessons or the unforeseen opportunities? Yeah, I, I, I always said like I've been an academician, an engineer, a bank investment banker, you know, a uh, whole bunch of things like you said. The hardest thing for me has been to be the eldest son of a Chinese family. <laughs> okay. I think it would be the same with Sri Lankan family, right? Most the responsibility the and everything that comes with it. Um, I think the problem in Asia is that you know um, most of our family grew up from a background that's not as fortunate as us. Mm -hmm. So they always want you to do better, and their measure of success is how much money you're making, right? And as I said, you know that cannot be the only measure, particularly in this part of the world right now. Um, so uh, you know, but in terms of like failure, this is something that we need to adapt. That failure is a learning process. You need to learn from it, and you know, and you got to know that you will fail, but fail quickly and fail often, right? So when you, if you're doing a startup or any companies, you know, do it and then make sure that you get feedback. And that's the other thing I would like to encourage all of you, you know, like you got a lot of Sri Lankan um, entrepreneurs, innovators there. Give them a chance, try out their product or their services, and tell them it's crap, because that is good for them. Rather than, they, rather than they keep spending money and effort trying to make this thing that they think everybody wants, and then at the end of the day when they have used up all their resources, then it doesn't work. You know, so it, you know, that's why one of the success stories in America is because Americans are willing to give small companies a shot mm -hmm. at their services and tell them whether it's good or not. But unfortunately, in Australia and most part of the world, everybody just want to go with the names, the name brands. And you can see now the name brands are being disrupted. You know, IBM and you know, all the big corporations that we used to think of you know, nowadays they're being disrupted by, um, you know, startups and so on, which is why they themselves are trying to innovate or have stakes in startups. Um, so I think, you know, embrace failure as a learning process and not see it as something that is, you know, basically a, 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 um, a, a failure towards your, en your ultimate goal. Just accept that it will happen. It is, you know, it's like science, right? You mm -hmm. have the trial and error. But don't go and you know have a huge loss that you cannot recover from. Have small ones, plenty of it. Certainly, that's going to mold you better for a better that's version right. of your concept and yourself as well. So, okay, we are coming towards the and last question. Right. Yes. So, finally, what advice would you give to the aspiring futurists and technologists, entrepreneurs, and innovators who are looking to make a positive impact in the world? I think, like you said, you know, watch the TEDx talks and so on. Um, you know, you learn a lot from everybody sharing the information around the world. And for Sri Lanka, you know, go to the activities that um, you know the um, um, accelerator and incubator like Hatchworks has. I mean, it's amazing what they have done. I mean, um, when you know Jivan and Brina were just discussing about it, you know, uh, w w five six years ago, it was nothing. It was, there was no building, and to see where they are now is amazing achievement. I mean, we are talking about at a global stage. This is why I'm here, right? Because um, I, you know, I've been to incubators, accelerators around the world, um, and to have one in your backyard here, it's amazing. And I, I, I hope that more people would actually come by. And I actually suggested that they should actually be a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm not sure if you've been there, but do, yes, do visit it. It's amazing, yes, isn't it? True. I mean, you know, the, the amount of innovators in there. The potential. Yeah, that yeah, is, uh, and, and yeah, very, very positive. positive. So yes. I think, you know, immerse yourself, keep learning, you know, and uh, keep, keep an open mind and uh, look at the world problems and look for solutions for it. Don't just think about the money you're going to make at the end. That should be a byproduct. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because that's not everything ultimately because yep. a lot of people with the money also lack something and they're trying to find. Me yeah, so it. as an investor, because you know, like I said, I invested over 55 companies. The first thing I look at is the why. Why mm -hmm. is the entrepreneur doing this project? Mm -hmm. If it's to make money, I, I don't think I'll be investing in them because the next thing that makes money, they're going to jump there yeah, and then I'm going to be holding the baby. But if the reason is to change the world, to make it a better place, you know, then yeah, it, it, it resonates with me. Even if they fail, at least they tried. Yes. You know, um, so that's where I would like to direct investments into. Um, so really, the why is more important than the how or the what. Amazing. Wonderful, wonderful thoughts, Dr. Tan. Absolutely a pleasure. And uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Rupahini Corporation, Channel I, it's a great privilege that we were able to have you here in sh short notice during your short span of stay here. And uh, it's a great, valuable thoughts that you are bringing from the globe to Sri Lanka and the youngsters who must be watching and keenly listening to you as well. And uh, as you say the words, I just, you know, quote them, seek, share, apply knowledge to progress humanity. That's what your quote yes. is. Thank so and once again, thank you very much, Dr. Clarence Tan, for joining us today. And uh, have a wonderful stay in the balance day, a number of days that you're here in Sri Lanka. And right. thank you very much. All thank the very you. best. Thank you for having me here. Good luck, everybody. And that's a wrap of today's exclusive interview with Cl Dr. Clarence Tan. Do join us in the next episode where we bring you all the best. Good night. <laughs>